Imagine having to not equip an item piece to be the most optimal. I don't know, that kind of seems dumb to me. Hello, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we are going to be talking about R95, R93, R86, R76, R2, D2, I don't know. But essentially, I just wanted to talk about like equipment ranks and like, you know, the optimal equipment ranks and all of that kind of jazz, right? A lot of people have been coming through the subreddits or I've been like watching YouTube videos or like this or that and you've got we've got guides like this that we brought over from CN, right? A lot of people just like follow these blindly and it's not really the right thing to do in my opinion. So today I just wanted to like walk through each of these guys, well not all of them, but I wanted to give you like my thoughts around them and like how to really like take the right information from it. Because you know like keeping your cockroach at 3 star 7, 6 forever, it's so sad man, it is so sad. Alright so let me begin this video with like what all of this is about. Why do we like, let's say for this one. So when R95 comes out, Makoto she's not going to be wearing her middle left piece which is her armor piece. Hari is the same as well. And so like, why do we do things like that? The most immediate obvious answer is that you are not letting them have their armor piece so that they actually take more damage. As I've explained previously, if you take more damage, it means that you get more TP gains. However, why do you want more TP gains? Because like in the long run, it could mean your Makoto dying or your Kari dying or something like that. For the general population, generally, I don't think these guides are like 100% optimal, especially when people are trying to figure out like auto comps or they're just like throwing whatever at it, right? And so when you throw whatever, at it, you're kind of like hoping to actually have your characters at their peak performance. If I was more casual and I was just like, you know, doing whatever, I would actually just slam all of the equipment and refine it all. So I guess what I'm trying to allude to is that the biggest reason why you would follow any of these guides is because you are following like some CN Chinese timelines. Chinese timelines are typically incredibly tight and like you have to have like the exact specific equipment. So I've got a CN example here and I wanted to show you guys this. So this is actually the comp that I ran for Boss 4, which was the ogre or whatever it was called but essentially what happened is that like as we got to around the first ubs right so here i don't know if i can slow this down i <laughs> my chinese is pretty crap but essentially here what you can see here is that makoto is getting her ubi and susana is getting her ubi at about 109 i didn't get it. I was not getting this. And the reason I wasn't getting it was because I didn't have the right equips. This timeline only works if you have an R93, so that's fully maxed out at this point in the game, Makoto and R93 Suzuna as well. So if we play through this, you'll see like Makoto gets it and Suzuna already has it. I did not have that. By the time I got the Makoto UB off, Suzuna still did not have her UB. And you can see this video vigorously spamming it, right? And they're just like, <laughs> I, I just couldn't get any of these timings. So if I was just to play through, like there's not much else to see to be honest like I, I we've also got like yukari so if i skip to the end what actually happened for me was that you see that they actually end up with all everyone living when i played through this my erika and my suzuna ended up dying and do you know why it's because my freaking yukari did not have the piece that she needed for the hp recovery who would have freaking thought right who would have freaking th not me I, I didn't know and so it's only when i actually matched their equipments almost exactly is when i actually got this like similar results to this timeline now if I hop back over to like our charts and stuff, so what I'm trying to really say is that like these kinds of charts are really designed for like to accompany these kinds of videos. If you're not going to try follow these like step by step, then like honestly, you could actually technically just slam it all. I would be a little bit more wary for some of them. Like I think Shinobu and Kokoro are some that you need to really watch out for. However, for the most part, you can slam most of it except for a couple of principles. So whenever we have an item upgrade, I want you guys to be prepared and this is how I would look at it. For clan battle and for arena, typically the most important stat is TP boost. So if I hop over here, We've got a stat over here called TP boost, as you can see. So you can see here, 8.5, compare 8.5. Let's go to 9.3, right? Let's go to 9.3, compare that to 8.5, which is, I think, what we had. And you can see Yori has 17 TP boost when she gets to 9.3. Oh my God. Okay, that actually just gives me PTSD because that exact same thing happened to me. Like in that video I just showed you, it was happening to me as well for Hiori because Hiori, my Hiori just was not maxed out and she could not get her timings in. Oh my gosh, it's, it's a tilter, man. It's a real tilter, I'm telling you. But yeah. 
essentially the idea of all of these charts is just to maximize your TP gain, right? So if I hop back over here, you can see Akino gets a 20 TP boost if she's at 9-3. And what's actually funny is that when you actually go to 10-3 or something, you know, we're about to get 9-5 and then we'll go to 10-3, stuff like that. At 10-3, I think everyone, uh, almost everyone loses their TP boost. And what actually ends up happening is that the optimal build for DPSs is like 9-5 without the armor piece. Like seriously, can you imagine like, oh my gosh, designing your game around like this kind of stuff. But as I already showed you, it's like so important. So for example, another one here, if we go 8-6 to 9-3 and I want to look for Yukari down here, you can see that Yukari actually loses 15 HP recovery boost if you push her to 9-3 as opposed to 8-6. It's for this reason that Yukari is one of the characters that you actually leave at 8-6. I am not going to make that mistake again. I cannot bear to see my Erika and Susana die another time. Like I'm going to keep her at 8-6 and that is that. So if we have a look through this chart, generally DPS is they're all going to 9-3, right? And then we've got like the tanks and the supports and stuff staying at about 8-6. So it's for those similar reasons, right? The HP recovery and stuff like that. However, when we do get 9-5, a lot more characters actually do have the incentive to go up to 9-5, except for these guys over here. Honestly, again, I will take both of these with a grain of salt because like if you look here, Kokoro here, it says that she's okay to go to R8-5. However, back when it was R9-3, they were telling us to do R7. When R9-3 was released, R8-5 actually already existed. So why couldn't Kokoro be R85 back when it was R93 over here? Perhaps it was for CB, I'm not sure, but like, you know, somewhere along the way, they probably realized like, you know, it's actually kind of okay to do that. For the most part, I think it's okay to follow these, like, you know, Shinobu, Kokoro, Makoto, Kaori, and then you got these ones down here. I think it's okay. But again, if you're just like throwing stuff into the clan battles and just doing the best you can, you know, like putting all of your equips on is probably not a bad idea. If you leave out the armor piece off of Makoto or Kaori, for example, you're still going to be able to get like four UBs off. It's just that the first one might come one second earlier or something. Obviously, I would love for all of you to min max, but like, you know, sometimes it gets a little dank. And like, to be honest, this game is really better enjoyed, I, I reckon. In a more casual manner, I guess, like this is, it really is like a skip ticket simulation. All right, so let me like properly evaluate these guys then like, you know, between these two, honestly, like all of this looks pretty good and all of that looks pretty good. However, I would argue that a lot of these guys can go to 9-3 without repercussions, except for Yukari. If you are scared, probably leave out the supports and possibly some of the tanks, but like for the most part, I think it's fine. Typically tanks, especially in CB, you don't smash their UBs like right away. So I think it's okay. You get them a little tankier, you know, maybe they can tank a bit more, you know? But generally 9-3, this chart looks pretty fine to me. All right, if we have a look at the next one, R9-5, I wanna show you first what the DPS is actually get so if you guys remember those freaking amulets that we were actually getting this last uh update um let me have a look for it i think Arisa will have it so it's that purple amulet that everybody seems to use this one right here this bad boy, oh my lord, the elemental heart, this guy. So what's so good about the elemental heart is that it actually gave you a 10 TP boost when you max refined it. However, when we get R95, um, this one over here, when we get R95, we will actually get a new amulet in the bottom left slot. So that amulet is actually gonna look like this guy. And if I do a quick Google translate, it is physical attack up, magic defense up, physical crit up, and response volume up by 10 inches in 20 something. This is actually just HP recovery. So if we come back here, this is just that Google translated. So for magic defense like that kind of is the, the trade-off is good enough for you to actually, you know, take all of this, right? By gaining four magic defense, we're losing a little bit of TP gain, but we are also gaining 140 physical attack and 20 physical crit. You can see why this is a good fourth item, right? Like the R94, this is going to go in. Like you can see over here, uh, let me just pop up. Uh, let's see, Makoto. Makoto. So if I go rank here, you can see R94. This is going to be that fourth piece, right? And then what we also see is that there is going to be an armor piece. That is the R95 bit armor piece. So if I actually go over to the armor piece uh, over here, we're going to have 600 HP and that's probably defenses or something like that, right? As you can see, yeah, 600 HP, 8 defense and 20 magical defense. HP is okay to gain because it doesn't affect the amount of damage you take. It just affects how much damage you can take. Whether you have like 5k HP or 10k HP, as long as you take like 1k damage, you're going to get the same TP gain. However, as you up your physical defense or your magic defense, it actually like reduces the amount of damage you take. 
So for example, instead of taking 1000 damage, you're going to be taking like 900 damage. 900 damage is just going to result in less TP gain. But yeah, so I guess what I'm really trying to get out with this video is like, you know, when the time comes, if an R95 comes out and, you know, Papa Lace isn't around, like you should know what to do now. With DPS going from R93 over to R95, typically the trinket is a safe one. However, a lot of the time, especially going to R95, you want to not put on that armor piece. For me personally, for example, Eriko, Shiori, Arisa, Suzuna, Mitsuki, like I'm going to be a little bit wary, like, but it should be okay, I reckon. Again, the most important stat is your TP gains. And actually, no, that is not the only thing. I almost forgot. It's also your TP retain, this guy right here. So if I uncheck everything, how do I uncheck everything? Um, Because there are only really two stats that really, really matter. And that is TP retain and TP boost. So TP retain, what that stat is, is after you cast a UB, how much of your total TP do you actually retain? So you can see here, Kari actually gains 5 TP retain. So for example, when she's at R93, when she uses her UB, she's going to actually have 5% more than if she was at 8.6. So you know that blue bar, it's going to go full, you're going to hit the UB and it's going to come back to 5% instead of going to 0%. And honestly, like that happens every single time, right? And a couple of others have the TP retain and it's, uh, it's such a good stat. Otherwise, yeah, look, 9-3 to 8-6, so much TP boost. This is why 9-3 was so, so important and what just really screwed me up. See the 17 and 17 on Hiori and Kari? This was enough to get like another UB or two off in my runs. Or rather, I should say like because I didn't have them at 9-3, like when I was testing, I was wondering what the heck was going wrong. I was missing two UBs or something. Actually, one last stat I want to talk about is dodge, which is really, really insane. So you see Kokoro here here she's got minus three dodge or whatever i don't know how you guys like feel about this but like if a character has too much dodge if they dodge the attacks that means that they are not taking damage and if they're not taking damage they're not getting the tp which means that they won't get their ubs off at the right time sometimes if the timings are tight you don't want that but typically for a character like kokoro it's mainly kokoro you want as little dodge as possible because if she dodges and she's not able to get her ub in time then you can't kokoro switch or you can't get her to heal usually for kokoro it's it's pretty fatal. For your other DPSs, it tends to be okay, but like, yeah, uh, for Kokoro, like the dodge is actually really, you got, you need to pay attention to it. All right, guys, pre-editing somehow, I've talked for like 20, 25 minutes about stats and numbers and spreadsheets and stuff, but I hope you kind of understand like where I'm coming from, right? Like there, there is a, there is a logic to each of these spreadsheets or rather these stat sheets. It's not too hard to figure out, but generally these stat sheets, they are made for the purposes of using with the CN timelines. If you're not using using the CN timelines, you can follow them loosely, but you know, you're not going to like brick anything for yourself, especially if you're just autoing and stuff. Oh, actually there is one more thing I want to talk about and that is levels. So as you guys know, the level cap raised from 88 to 93 last CB and it was, <laughs> it was actually another contributor to my pain. And the reason is because actually for this exact same comp, for this comp, now I can't remember which UB it was, but like there are a couple of Arisa UBs that just did not line up, right? And they... <laughs> It's just so freaking annoying. And the reason was because she was level 90 rather than level 91. All right, I guess that's kind of it for this video. I hope it's been kind of educational, but like, you know, I've seen a lot of posts around there. Like if your Kokoro is four star or five star, you're, you're screwed, you're done. So it's not the end of the world, guys. It might hurt if you're following like the Chinese timelines or the JP timelines, but if you're not even following those, it doesn't even matter. Like that is really the, that is the truth of it. It doesn't matter if you're not following them. Shinobu, like, oh no, I quit my armor piece on my Koto. Like chill. It's all right, man. It's not bricked. She is doing okay. All right, but aside from that, let's call it a wrap. I think I've rambled on like long enough about this freaking equipment rank R2D2 kind of thing. I've got a secret message for you guys. And that's, it's no big deal. If you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it. It tells me that you've made it to the end of the video and I am forever grateful. Because like, to be honest, it really is no big deal. I bet you people can run bricked comps and like crappy comps all the way up to top 25 and top 50 approx. Top 10, it gets like ultra sweet sweaty but like top 25 top 50 like he could run anything and still get there to be honest it really is just a matter of time and actually one of my upcoming videos it's going to be like a competitive guide for free-to-play players but yeah aside from that i guess like if you guys have found this video helpful like consider liking or subscribing or following you know the works but otherwise let's call it there and thank you guys so much for watching i will catch you guys in the next video bye bye